started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Oh my gosh, the first year of Everett and having a baby in my marriage. Wow. That was a transformation change because our roles, there was a new chapter. So we had to do different roles. And in mine and Austin's eyes, there was a moms do this, dads do this. But what I realized really quickly is there is no dad do this, mom do this. We are partners in this game. We are 50, 50 in this game. You do what you can, I do what we can, and we meet in the middle. There is no mom does 100% and dad does 5%. I am not about that life. (laughs) Not at all. And so that really helped our marriage out a lot because Austin was there. He was putting the baby in the baby carrier. He was going and changing diapers. And he was getting the baby in the middle of the night, bringing him to me so that I can breastfeed. He was all up into the mom game of making me feel good. In return, I was able to do the same for him. And so it was just, we kept it a partnership. We made it a 50-50 as much as we possibly could in every aspect. And Austin, it was so great to see him in that light, in that way, loving up on our son. It made me fall in love with him even more, seeing that love in his eyes and that passion in his eyes for him, my son, and for me. He was just like, wow, you did that. (laughs) And I think looking at it from that way of him giving me those eyes of like, you did that. You brought this kid into this world and it refreshed our life, our love, our life and our marriage. It put a little bit of extra spice in the marriage. So the first year of being a new mom and a wife has been, has been fun. Like we found a way to make it fun, which is why we're here on the Make Life Fun Show, right? And so, so yeah, so I encourage you to talk to your partner about how can we make this more of a win-win? Because at the end of the day, that's what it needs to be about in a relationship is how can we make it win-win so that mama doesn't feel like everything's on her shoulders and daddy doesn't feel like he's missing out. Balance is a big thing and it is overwhelming at times and balancing it all can feel like a lot. Not knowing what's important to you is where that makes it a lot. Because for me, I always knew from the get-go, from the beginning, that Everett was the most important thing. Priority number one, no matter what I was doing in my business, no matter what I was doing, no matter what, if Everett was crying, that key of his, like hearing his cry was my priority. Like he needs me. I would drop whatever I was doing to, to make sure that I could help my son. And then my mother told me something brilliant. I said, Bob, he's crying. I can't take a shower. He is crying. And my mom's like, you got to let your baby cry sometimes. And that was a game changer to me because I was like, no, it's my job to make sure he's never crying. He's always happy. And when I got that permission from my mom, like, it's okay to let your baby cry sometimes. I've been able to let Everett cry. But what has happened is when I first started letting him cry, I would get all sorts of like emotions in my heart. My armpits would start sweating and I'd feel so anxious, right? Because I'm like, oh my gosh, he's not supposed to be crying. But what I've done now that's helped me is I make sure I take some breaths. I take some deep conscious breaths. So for me, my favorite breathing is in for four, hold for seven, and then out for eight. That is my favorite full conscious breath. And I just bring myself here and I remind myself that he is safe. He is in his room. The door is closed. I have baby proof that room and he is completely safe. So if I need to take a quick five, 10 minute shower, it is okay. He is going to be okay. I make sure that he's changed and taken care of before I do what I have to do. And that was a game changer for me. And so now we're getting into this place where we're putting him in his own room and having him cry, which is kind of, But again, I'm reminded to take those full conscious breaths and know that he is safe. And this is for his development that he needs to learn to soothe himself. I mean, I'm not going to let him cry for more than 10 minutes at this point, but I'm able to regulate myself in a point where at the beginning, it was just anxiety, anxiety. 
Now I can bring myself and remind myself that he's safe. Remind myself this is my job to get him into a place where he can self-soothe himself in order to go to sleep, in order to for me to take a shower. As a podcaster, what have I learned? I have learned a lot as a podcaster. I've learned that I'm really good at it. <laughs> a lot of people tell me that I'm really good at podcasting and interviewing and talking to my guests and having those conversations. And what I do with those conversations, I, so this is my second podcast. And my first podcast was all very professional, trying to be just like everybody else, basically. <laughs> when I look in hindsight, I was following a model that was out there and it wasn't fun for me. So I had to create my own version of fun. And for me, that's just connecting with my guests, like heart to heart and having those conversations that light me up, that puts like tingles up and down my spine. I want the truth. <laughs> I want the truth of the person sitting in front of me. And that has been a game changer because the conversations are real. The conversations alive in me and they stick and they stay. And so I know if they touch me and my soul like this, that they're touching my listeners. And that's a great question. What is next for Josie as a mom and a wife and a woman? Adventure. So I've lately been picturing my million dollar Josie. <laughs> Every day I've been visualizing her and she's on the beach with her feet in the sand, her head in the clouds, set on her face. Oh my gosh, yes. And I am receiving that. That is the vision I'm putting out there. That is what keeps me moving forward. And so yeah, when I get up in the morning, what is that girl wearing? What is that girl doing? What is her vibe? <laughs> and I'm tapping into that vibe every day and I'm bringing it to me. And I'm manifesting my dream life right in front of my eyes. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> So I'm going to keep doing that. Yes. Yeah, so this vision, I have a vision of this dream life where I have this community of moms that are coming together to let, to light up the world, to illuminate themselves. And by illuminating themselves or illuminating the world, and it's a ripple effect. And I am here to put my flag in the ground and be that light. <laughs> and I'm going to hold that space. And I know what it feels like now to hold that space. I know what it feels like now to hold that light of joy of happiness, of compassion, of radical forgiveness for myself. And so I am there to hold the hands of these moms as they walk their journey to be having this life that just feels like you're on fire lit up about it all. The good, the bad, the ugly, thankful for it all. The good, the bad, the ugly, knowing that contrast is going to exist, knowing that we are going to have bad days. We're going to have moments we fall, but giving ourselves the grace, the love, the compassion that we give to our kids. And that is what I'm teaching. That is what I'm speaking on. That is what's lighting me up. And so, yes, Mindfulness Mamas is what's coming next. And then from that, a group coaching program for Bloom Moms. <laughs> we're going to bloom. We're going to bloom and we're going to bloom. And the vision is like a sunflower. So a sunflower with all these seeds in the middle. So the sunflower with the seeds the seeds in the middle of the sunflower, they repopulate and they keep bringing more life. And so if we can envision ourselves as that big, boomy sunflower, each goodness that we give to ourselves, we're literally giving back to the world. Like we're planting seeds. By planting the seeds within ourselves, we are allowing the world to do the same. We're allowing people to see that it's possible. We are allowing people to see that it's okay to be happy. Yes, there's craziness going on. There's always going to be craziness going on. But if we can hold that frequency, that vibration of love and compassion and radical forgiveness, starting with ourselves, then we can hold that for everybody else. And right now the world needs us to hold this frequency of love. The world needs us to hold this frequency of radical forgiveness, radical compassion, peace. Like that is what we need in this world more than anything right now. And it starts with you. It starts with us by doing your practice. Getting into practice. What are you practicing? We're always practicing something. What are you practicing? Are you practicing being miserable? Are you practicing being anxiety-ridden, depressed? Like, what is your practice? What is your everyday practice? When you get out of bed in the morning, what's the first thought in your mind? We're all going through some stuff and it is easy to slip when we're going through some stuff. But when we have those processes, when we have those practices, when we embody them, when they're in our souls and our minds, when they're non-negotiable, <laughs> then it doesn't matter what's going on in the world because that's your priority number one. It's like my priority number one is my son. So no matter what's going on in the world, Everett comes first, right? And my husband, of course, <laughs> my husband, of course, but whatever is going on in the world, that is my priority. And I know that it's non-negotiable, 
my non-negotiable in the morning. I'm going to pray. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to get into this frequency where I'm lit up, fired up about life. Because then when, as I move forward, it's a ripple effect. Everybody I come in contact with feels that vibe. I am sending out my love. I am sending out that compassion and I'm making the world a better place by just smiling, by just being happy. And so, but it starts with you. So you have to practice that so that you can take it out into the world and share it far and wide. A lot of people are right now into the state of anxiety because the world is opening back up. It's feeling like the world is, this is what it's feeling like. So we've been in hibernation. Now spring is coming. The world is opening back up. People are starting to be like, is it sanitary out there? What is out there? It's scary. Can I go back to my regular life? Do I want to go back to my regular life? No, I don't really want to go back to my regular life. I know there's a better way. So people are looking for a better way. People are looking for ways to do what they love and be more passionate and be more lit up and fired up because they had a taste of freedom. Yes, it was not all roses what we went through, but we did. We got a taste of freedom. We were home with our families. Like we were able to enjoy. Yes, there was hard moments, but if you really, really, really look at it, I'm sure there was some beautiful moments in there as well with your family. Moments of being by yourself in a way that you never were before. So you could have gone deeper if you chose to moments where, where you had that taste of bliss because I did when I know there wasn't every day wasn't perfect, but there was that taste of bliss of being in my own space with the people I love the most. And so now we want that more than ever. So remember what that taste of bliss feels like. Come back to that feeling in your body, envision it and sense it and be with it often. Come back to it often. And everything that you do, let that be your guide. Let that feeling of bliss move you forward because that's how you're going to get the answers. Nobody can have has the answers for you. I'm not here saying I have all the answers for you. You have all the answers for you. You are the only one that knows what you need. You're the only one that knows what feels good for you. You're the only one that knows what bliss is. So find that bliss and practice feeling that bliss as you're moving forward into this new life. Every day is a new day in the body is what I say. So give that a thought and see how that lands. My life before ever, I was a nomadic Josie. Oh my gosh, who was she? <laughs> make like or make the jump Josie made the jump and Josie made the jump was all about like jumping into life head first (laughs) balls to the wall pedal to the metal having all the fun that was travel for me that was that is my love language travel to me is it fills me up it gives me newness it gives me connection with other people and other ways of being and it allows you to be in a state that I'm feeling now in my life that I cert so wild. Wow. Revelation. So yeah. So when I was traveling, I was looking for that happiness. I was looking for that joy. And for me, that was travel. That was going to places and having new experiences. That was what lit me up and great. But now that I've cultivated the sense of peace, the sense of joy, the sense of happiness and love within myself, I, yeah, travel is just going to be even more fun, but it's crazy because I don't crave it in that way anymore. It's not such a pull to run away from what is happening. It is now an exciting thing that I want to share with my family. I want to share with my husband. I want to share with my son. And I can't wait to take Everett to the ocean. That is like the vision. I want to see him walking and with his little toes in the sand for the first time. And I want to show him the world and I want him to live in new places and have new experiences and be a part of the culture. So when I travel, it's all about culture for me. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I don't need the five-star hotel. I want that guest house where the family is still right next door and I could go have a conversation. And I like to feel like I'm living there. I like to feel like I'm immersed in it. And that's my way of traveling. I like to travel slow. 30 days in one place was my ideal (laughs) back in my day of traveling. And so, yeah, living in different places for 30 days at a time would be, that's the dream. That's the vision. That's what I'm birthing. Come on, universe. I'm ready to receive. (laughs) And so, yeah, so travel to me in this new chapter of momhood is going to look a lot the same, but a different intention. I am. I'm calling it in and I feel it with every fiber of my being. Like it's magic. It's magic. Austin's like on fire too. Like he is a year sober. He is officially one year sober. 
he is lit up and fired up to help others that are have issues with addiction and alcohol because he's found a way to make it work for him to say no. And I mean, Austin has been drinking ever since he was in high school and that drinking just got worse and worse, and worse. And so for him to say no to drinking, amazing. And that's made me say no to drinking. So we're a sober household and we're loving life sober. So I'm not, I'm not on anything. I'm just high on life. And I'm just so stoked for, yeah, for this next chapter of life. What my husband's going to be teaching and helping. I'm going to be teaching and helping the world be a better place. And I think that's what it's all about. It's about that service piece. It's about finding that joy and enlightenment for yourself and then going back and grabbing others, bringing them along for the ride and showing them what's possible. And that's what the next chapter looks like. And me too. I'm ready for you. I've been having this vision of a girl. I'm having this vision of a little girl. I also want to adopt a baby as well. So we're putting that out in the universe. I want to give back. I want to help. I want to that little baby that needs adopting that I don't know where you are in the world, what ethnicity you are, what gender you are. Oh, but I know that I can help and be your mama. So universe, come on. Yeah, there is so much energy that we can tap into. There's so much power that we can tap into. And a lot of us don't even know, like we know it's there, but we don't know how to consciously tap into it. And for me, I tap into it meditation every day, that energy of love and light and oneness, that energy of like connectedness, that energy of, oh my gosh, taking up space in space. (laughs) And it's such a beautiful practice of feeling that good energy and knowing that there is no separation, knowing that we are all one, but not just saying it, but knowing it with the core of my being. It's all the energy out there isn't good. So you have to choose that you're going to tap into love. You're going to tap into light and you're going to let that be, let that be your guide. Really, honestly, that is my practice and I crave it. So a lot of people say, meditation is hard. And that's the thing that you hear all the time. Meditation is hard. I don't do it because it takes too much time, but I crave meditation. Now that I have my practice of meditating daily, I crave it. I look forward to it because it's my way of silencing my mind, putting it in a hammock, (laughs) literally (laughs) put my mind in a hammock at the beach, swayed while I tap into my heart, where I tap into my soul and I just allow silence to be. And what happens is those insights. What happens is my poetry. What happens is I'm tapped in, turned on and connected to something greater than myself. And sometimes when I've done meditating and I've written poetry and I've done journaling, I read it back and I'm in tears, I'm weeping because there's so much love there. And so it's just, it's a practice that is worth it. Even if you only have 10 minutes, sit down, put your mind in the hammock, or if it's a hiking trail for you, or if it's top of mountain for you, or wherever you want your mind to be, put it somewhere where it can enjoy the scenery <laughs> and tap into your heart, tap into your soul, and magic starts to happen when you start to connect with yourself in that way. Meditation, I've always dabbled in, but the moment I found out about Everett, that's when the meditation game changed for me. I started doing hypnobirthing, which is hypnobirthing is where you are knowing that I am made for this. Like my body is made for this. I was born for this moment and pumping yourself up to know that you are a vessel for this being and you're a vessel and my visualization was that light beam. I was the light beam. It was a vision of light coming into me, through me, as me, for me. And so I did that meditation practice every day, twice a day, three times a day with Everett in my womb. And now I still continue this practice because it felt so good then. And it feels even better now because it's been a practice that I've been doing, I did for so long. Everett is going to be one. And so I've been doing this practice for almost two years now of tapping in to that light, tapping in and telling myself, you're a goddess, you're born for this. Like, come on, keep going. Don't stop. Giving myself that positive self-talk is just, it does something to your soul. Like you need to hear that you love yourself. You need to hear that you're wonderful. You need to hear that you're doing your best. You need to hear that from yourself. You can hear it from the outside world all day long. It doesn't mean as much until it comes from you, that you 
are loving up on yourself and loving yourself back into life. That is what happened by doing this practice with Everett in my womb. I literally loved myself back to life. I was able to let go of the shame, let go of the guilt. I was able to forgive myself and have radical compassion for myself. I was able to have that radical compassion for my husband, which in turn, I was less critical of him. And so he was able to explore his space. He was able to then go into his own healing journey to get to a place where he's sober now for a year. Like it's been like transformational. It's been amazing. And it all started with me sitting down, getting quiet, listening to those hypnobirthing meditations. And basically what they said was that I'm a goddess. I'm a queen. I was made to birth and I am divine. I am, yes, all that good stuff. And I love hearing it. <laughs> and I tell it to myself. And that's my meditation. Now I don't need the recording. I just tell it to myself. Josie, you're a goddess. Josie, you're amazing. You're doing great in the world. Let your light shine. Keep shining. Keep tapping in. You are love. You are light. You are wanted. You are needed. You are divine. <laughs> that is what I tell myself. Oh, the mirror. I love the mirror. Oh, I love the mirror. So there's a lot of mirror work has gone on to get me here too. The mirror work started with, oh my gosh, just looking at myself in the mirror and from, so I'm going to give credit where credit is due. So this is Lisa Nichols exercise. She was the one who taught me this exercise and it is looking at myself in the mirror and telling myself, Josie, I love you for and listing seven things I love myself for. Josie, I'm proud of you for listing seven things I'm proud of myself for. Josie, I commit to you and I commit to myself and I reaffirm myself in the mirror. I still do that practice actually to this day. I love that practice of looking at myself in the mirror in the eye and loving up on myself. And then also I love the practice in the mirror of radical forgiveness. Like Josie, I forgive you for like that one is the biggest one out of them all. Like love, you can say you love yourself, but you're not going to love yourself until you forgive yourself basically. So if anything you're taking from this is look at yourself in the mirror and start forgiving yourself for all of it, all of it. You did the best you could, honestly. We know better, we do better. And that is, oh, who are you that says that? It's not coming to me yet, but it will. But yeah, you know better and then you do better. So we didn't know, we didn't know what we didn't know. You showed up, you did the best you could and hurt people, hurt people. It happened, but love yourself. You're doing the best you can. You're doing great at being human. You're doing great at being a human. We're put on this earth with my firm knowing we are put on this earth to walk this path of contrast. We're put on this earth to have good and bad days. If we didn't have the bad days, how would we know what a good day is? We wouldn't. There are going to be times where life is so tough. I mean, I've had my share of toughness. I've had my share of shame and guilt and disconnection from my body. I've had my share of it. Like life has not been all roses and butterflies. But what I know, like I know, like I know is that I am loved. I was put on this earth to love. And it starts with me. It starts with me loving myself. It starts with me forgiving myself and giving myself grace as I walk through this journey. It's not always going to be easy, but coming back to the knowing that I deserve my own love. I deserve my own forgiveness because if we can't forgive ourselves, we can't forgive other people. And if we don't forgive, we don't heal. Like I truly believe that is the number one way to heal everything is just by first forgiving yourself, because once you forgive yourself, then you could look at others through that eyes of forgiveness, of radical forgiveness. And for me, forgiveness is like, I like to break the word down for give, like to give as you did before, before you were hurt, before you were wounded, before it was awful, before you decided, okay, I never want to feel this way again. So this is what I'm doing before, before, before. So give as you did before to yourself. You deserve it. But really the Ho'oponopono prayer is another practice that I love. It's a Hawaiian practice. I haven't been to Hawaii yet, but it's on my list. 2022, let's go. The Ho'oponopono prayer is that hand on heart prayer. It is saying to yourself, I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I thank you. And as I love you, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And just repeating that to yourself with your hand on your heart. And it's all about loving up on yourself. Honestly, to pick up the hand mirror and look at yourself in the eyes. Like look at yourself in the eyes and realize that you are divine being. See that sparkle in your eye. Look at yourself from the lens of compassion. 
That is the thing. That's the ticket. I know it's not that simple, but it really is that simple. <laughs> I know it sounds like it needs to, we think it needs to be hard. We think it needs to be hard. We think it needs to feel a certain way because we programmed ourselves to make it hard. Like if it's hard, then we can reward ourselves. If it's too easy, is it real? Did it even happen? If it's easy, it's like, no, that was too easy. Let's go back and find a harder way because it just, I mean, if it's not a struggle, it just doesn't feel right because we've been so conditioned to like the hard, like the hustle. I've been so busy today. I'm so busy, 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 busy. No, ease. Let it be easy, as Susie Moore so eloquently wrote in her book, Let It Be Easy. If you haven't read it, you should read it. Yeah, if you haven't read it, you should read it. <laughs> it's a great book, Let It Be Easy. Talking all about how life should feel easeful. And at each moment, asking yourself that question is, how can I invite more ease in this moment? That's a brilliant question. That's one to ponder. How can I add more ease for myself? And I think that's a practice too, because we're conditioned to like it harder or <laughs> my brain's in the gutter. <laughs> we're conditioned to like to make things hard and we have to look for the ease in things. We have to, <laughs> we have to look for the ease in life. How can I invite more ease in this situation? In my people pleasing, in my perfectionism, in my parenting, and the way I show up in my life, how can I invite more ease here? I think that's a brilliant question. Whenever it is sleepy, that is my meditation time. Whenever it is sleepy, that is my bath time. In the middle of the day, girl, I am taking a bath. <laughs> I am loving up on me. Whenever it's awake, I'll do the dishes, give them some pots and pans to play with, to do some dishes. Whenever it's awake, I'll do some cooking, say, give them some pots and pans to play with so that I can cook dinner or cook whatever I need to do. But whenever it's asleep, that is me time. That is when I am getting my work done, but I'm doing it for a place of joy. So turn on some tunes. Music is blaring in this house at all times. And until I need a moment of silence, because we need some silence too. Like there's some, we need it for our minds. So yeah, so music is playing. I just keep it light, fun and airy, but whenever it is taking a nap, that is me time. And I cherish that time. I rarely will you find me just sitting on my phone, scrolling through social media whenever to sleep. I am going outside, putting my face up to the sun. I am taking my shoes off, grounding myself. I am like, ah. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.